factual information that came into this. I, I really did read everything out and I had, um, you know, I was prepared to tell my parents this is why I'm doing it. So, you know, during that summer 2017 uh, through 2018, you know, it was a lot of me explaining factual information to them, um, then doing some research on their own, and then realizing that I, you know, I had some, I had a, a good basis for why I'm doing this. Um, 2018 summer comes around, my uncle, uh, my aunt and uncle, they live in Albuquerque, New Mexico. My uncle hooked me up with a job for a medical cannabis company out there. Uh, that's Everest Pop here, that's their logo. Uh, so I worked out there for a summer. This is where I really saw you know, my passion for this industry, my passion for helping people. Um, and so, go out there, I saw the whole operation from start to finish, from growing and harvesting, curing, processing, to everything that goes into the database of uh, a cannabis company. So, great experience, I love that summer. Uh, we'll always cherish that. Here's another picture of me. Uh, this past summer, I worked for uh, a guy by the name of Bernie Heinrichs at NG Heinrichs Greenhouses. We planted over 60 acres of him. I uh, germinated over 100,000 hemp seedlings through this process. Uh, and so really saw you know the hemp process from start to finish. But you know, cannabis and hemp are the same plant. They grow the same way. And I knew as a grower, I needed that experience. And I had you know I had to believe in myself, but I had to get that uh, get that experience to be to be where I wanted to be. Um, so I'm going to kind of go into the show me alternatives beginning. So 2018 comes around, November 2018, medicinal marijuana comes onto the ballot. It passes in the state of Missouri, 68% uh, to 32%, so you know, it passed with flying colors. And when that day happened, the next day, like, me and my parents knew that if we want to get involved in the industry, we had to learn, we had to, um, you know, we had to, we had to start taking steps forward to do that. So uh, my best friend found a conference up in KC. Um, he looked at me and I was like, we're going. I ended up calling my mom, I was like, should we go? And they were like, oh, absolutely. So we ended up buying these tickets to a uh, Missouri Cannabis Trade Association conference in Kansas City. We go up there. Um, it, it was a great experience, but I'm not gonna lie, it was very discouraging. The, they both, it was over like a thousand people, there were multiple speakers, and quite frankly, the whole time they were saying, you know, you know telling us how difficult it is to get into this industry. And we left that, uh, that conference probably more discouraged than I had ever been in those two years leading up to this. But um, during that conference, we met a guy by the name of Jack Mitchell. Jack Mitchell became our strategic business partner and our consultant through this. And you know, I do give a lot of props to him for leading us into the right direction of making this idea become a reality. Um, so I have this slide up here. Uh, so pretty much once we decided to work with Jack that we were going to pursue this, we needed to figure out how many licenses we were going to apply for. Like, and when I say licenses, there's three different ones: dispensary, manufacturing, and cultivation. Uh, the state of Missouri has only given up 190 dispensary, 85 manufacturing, and 60 cultivation. So, um, you know, we had this, you know, that it shows how competitive it is. And if you really want these licenses, you have to be, you know, a premier you know, leader. And, you know, you've got to show that your company can do what you say you're going to do. So, as a group, we, you know, not only were my parents involved with this one, we this is bigger than myself. So my aunt and uncle got involved, my cousin got involved, my other aunt and uncle got involved. And it's really became this huge family ordeal. But uh, we decided we're going for eight different applications, uh, or eight different licenses. Uh, we're going for five dispensaries, uh, two cultivations, and a manufacturing. Uh, this kind of shows the location that we're focusing on. We're focusing on the northeast part of Missouri. That's where I'm from. That's where I'm born and raised. We have roots there. Uh, you know, we're not, we're not going for big cities, and we're really that's that's our niche, just you know, so to say. But um, she got more into it, so. Tip number two is consistency, and uh, this relates to almost every aspect of your business, but for us, in this startup, uh, many of you may know, cannabis is still legal federally, and so you can't go to a bank, or a bank and get a traditional loan. You have to do venture capital. That was something I've never done. Obviously, my parents have never done it, um, and our whole team had never done it, so it was a huge learning curve, but to be involved, we had to do uh, venture capital. So, um, consistency, I think, is a huge tip because whether we were waking up every single day, you know, during the 2019 summer, I was working to, to better my growing skills. My cousin was waking up every single day to write application questions. But the big part came to, to raising that money. And I'm going to be honest, to, to do all these eight applications and to fund it in a way that to run it correctly and, you know, you're going to take losses. So expecting that, we had to raise $20 million. And we had to do that in five months. And being from a family, you know, being from a group that has no experience doing that, that was a huge task. But we knew we could do it. So you know, through you know, guidance and um, meeting people, we started off, you know, friends and family, and then uh, other friends were reaching out to other people, saying, you know, you need to come talk to these people about investing. Well, we ended up raising that twenty million dollars in five months. And from groups that were done, I was very proud of everyone. Um, 
but a big thing of it, I'll give a story real quick. Um, we, we, so I guess, I guess I'll give two stories, but I'll story real quick because my first investment meeting, I sit down, and this guy by the name of Don Way, look across, he's throwing all this investment terminology out, and I'm like, I have no idea what you mean. So, felt really, really bad leaving there, and I was like, I felt dumb, I felt like an idiot, and I don't ever want to happen, let that happen again. So what to do, go out, buy a couple books, and, uh, you know, learn to the next investment, I wouldn't feel that way. Another one, you know, was we had a guy out of Texas. Uh, he was he was on the verge of um, investing upwards of fifteen million dollars, and we were very hopeful. We thought that this was going to happen. We we're going to get our money. Fell through. We said no. I'm, I'm not involved. And I, you know, I don't want to invest with you all. So uh, <coughs> another big part, and this is the most important tip I can can give. You know, these other people said this as well. Build a strong team. And this is the truth, you know. I will sit up here and say, yes, I had the idea. Yes, I had the initiative to start this. But the only reason my company is where it's at now is through my team. And that is 100% the truth. Uh, as you can see, my family, the Foster family, uh, my aunt uncle, the Thomas family, the Montoya family. Um, I am super, super proud to know that these are my first real business partners. And these are the people that I'm going to be working with daily for the next however many years to make this happen. These are the most really put together, business savvy people you're going to meet. And super honored to know that my team uh, is my family. And quite frankly, I think the reason we raised the money uh, during this time was because we have such a strong team in every single investment meeting. You know, we were honest with every single person about where we are and who we are as people and where we are and the ability to, to raise money. So, you know, the trustworthiness in the people I'm working with is um, very huge. Um, you know, this is a long paragraph, you don't have to read this. I meant to shorten this down, but didn't get it edited. Uh, but, you know, the state wanted to see which cannabis experience. So we had a recruit team, you know, members of our team that have high cannabis experience. You can't just say, I'm going to start this business, but then have no one with no experience there to say that you can, you know, actually do it. So this is our CEO, of our character, um, great guy. Now, our other cannabis experience, you know, we're doing a manufacturing lab. We had to go out and recruit uh, manufacturers, you know, made a deal with manufacturers out of the state of San Diego, California, to come in and run our lab for us. Um, same with Michelle Mahoney, these are my ex-managers when I worked down at Everest. They live in Boston currently, and they're coming uh, back to work with us. But developing a team is huge, and that is the most important thing, I feel like. Of, uh, you know, I think it's a big myth in entrepreneurship that as an entrepreneur, you need to do it all. When in actuality, you specialize in your part, but you surround yourself with good people that can pick up your slack and where um, you're lacking. Tip number four uh, is do what is needed. Uh, this looks like nothing to you all, but each application that we applied for it came with 78 questions. We applied for eight applications times 78, you're looking at 624 questions in total. That is a lot of writing. Um, every single question was anywhere between 200 to 500 uh, words, up to 1,000, a couple of them. This one I had particularly wrote, uh, but in the summer, yeah, so 2019, I worked for Bernie Hymos and uh, did, did him for the first two months. Well, when it was getting crunch time, because the applications were due on August the 17th, um, it, was, you know, it was crunch time. So it was time for me to leave that job and come back to help write these applications. So I come back home um, about you know, mid to uh, early July and did nothing but seriously work 14 to 16 hour days. We were up literally, I mean, you could, our house was like the office. And at one point, there were 10 people in there, um, laptops open, coffee cups everywhere. It literally was our own little home office. And came back and I played lawyer for the last month. We did stuff of writing these applications because they have to be written in such a way that it looks like it's professional, technical law writing, which is something I had never done before. But something my cousin, who did this all summer, had never done before. But we knew that to be, you know, get this business to where we wanted to be, we had to learn. And so when I say I do what is needed, it means learn what is needed. When I was in an investment meeting and I felt, you know, bad because, um, you know, I didn't know the terminology, what I do, I go out and learn. So the next time I'm in an investment meeting, you don't, you don't feel like that. And same thing for this. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know how to write law, but I don't know how to cite regulations. So when I came back for the summer, you teach yourself, you know, what is needed to get done. So, you know, for instance, this one's all about security and, you know, taking, you know, codes 19 CSR 30-95.040. It's like, you would never really expect yourself to know that until you're forced to do it. Um, and so that's a huge tip. And as an entrepreneur, I think you, you, would, you should know your every single side of your business. And, for me, that was half the reason I wanted to go plant science is because 
I, I want to be able to walk into my grub and say that plant is lacking potassium. We're mixed up a different nutrient cycle to, you know, to feed it, you know, get rid of those symptoms. And I want to be able to look at the accounting books and say, hey, why, why are these numbers out of whack or whatever the deal may be. I do feel like an entrepreneur, you should know at least generally every part of your business. Um, I want to end it on uh, my favorite quote. Uh, this is what I think really inspires me as an entrepreneur. But uh, uh, in this quote, pretty much how it goes is, an entrepreneur is a person who would rather spend 100 hours a week working for themselves than 40 hours a week working for someone else. So thank you.